This is medical lane three, perform first aid to restore breathing and or pulse. Your task, perform first aid to restore breathing and or pulse of an unconscious adult. Conditions, you see an adult who appears to be choking, collapse on the ground. You are on a forward operating base, not in a sea burn environment, and no spinal injury is suspected. You have a basic life support bag. Standards, correctly perform all tasks to standard and sequence within seven minutes without causing any further injury. All right, step one. Approach the casualty and check for responsiveness. Hello, are you okay? Are you okay? The grader will state casualty is unresponsive. At this time, you will direct a specific bystander to call for medical personnel and direct another specific bystander to retrieve an automated external defibrillator. Get a medic. Get an AED. All right, step two, roll the casualty onto his or her back. Kneel beside the casualty. Raise the near arm and straighten it out above the head. Adjust the legs so they are together and straight or nearly straight. Place one hand on the back of the casualty's head and neck. Grasp the casualty under the arm with the free hand and pull steadily and evenly toward yourself keeping the head and neck in line with the torso. Roll the casualty as a single unit. Place the casualty's arms at his or her sides. The grader will state casualty does not appear to be breathing. Open the airway using the head tilt chin lift method. Expose the casualty's bare chest. Kneel at the level of the casualty's shoulders. Place one hand on casualty's forehead and apply firm backward pressure with palm to tilt head back. Place fingertips of other hand under bony part of lower jaw and lift, bringing chin forward. Do not use your thumb to lift. Do not completely close casualty's mouth. Do not press deeply into the soft tissue under the chin. Next, check for breathing. While maintaining the open airway position, place an ear over the casualty's mouth and nose looking toward the chest and stomach. Look for the chest to rise and fall. Listen for air escaping during exhalation. Feel for the flow of air on the side of your face. Count the number of respirations for 15 seconds. One, two, three, four. 15 seconds has elapsed. The greater will state casualty is not breathing. Next, you will insert an NPA. Keep the casualty in a face-up position. Select the appropriate size of airway by measuring from the patient's nostril to the earlobe or from the patient's nostril to the angle of the jaw. You will next lubricate the tube of the NPA Push the tip of the casualty's nose upward gently. Position the tube of the NPA so that the bevel or the pointed end of the NPA faces towards the septum, the partition inside the nose that separates the nostrils. Most NPAs are designed to be placed in the right nostril. Insert the NPA into the nostril and advance it until the flange rests against the nostril. Never force the airway into the patient's nostril. If resistance is met, pull the tube out and attempt to insert it in the other nostril. Recheck breathing per step four. The greater will state casualty is still not breathing. You're next going to give breath to ensure there's an open airway. Insert a face shield if available into the casualty's mouth with a short airway portion over the top of the tongue and flatten the plastic sheet around the mouth. Maintain airway and gently pinch nose closed, covering the MPA using the hand on the casualty's forehead. Take a normal breath and place your mouth in an airtight seal around the casualty's mouth. Give two breaths, one second each, taking a breath between them, while watching for the chest to rise and fall and listening and or feeling for air to escape during exhalation. Breaths should not be over-exaggerated or forceful. The greater will state the chest did not rise. Reposition the casualty's head slightly farther backward and re repeat the breaths. The greater will state the chest did not rise. Perform chest compressions to clear the airway. Kneel close to the side of the casualty's body. Locate the nipple line placing the heel of one hand on the lower half of the sternum breastbone. Place the heel of the other hand on top of the first hand on the lower half of the breastbone, extending or interlacing the fingers. Straighten and lock the elbows with the shoulders directly above the hands. Without bending the elbows, rocking or allowing the shoulders to sag, apply enough pressure to depress the breastbone one and a half to two inches. Give compressions at a rate of 100 per minute. Hard and fast at a ratio of 30 compressions to two breaths with the intent of relieving the obstruction. 
All right, 30 compressions has elapsed. Look in the mouth for objects between compressions and breaths. After one round of compressions and breaths, the grader will state you see an object in the casualty's mouth. Remove the object. Candidate simulates using proper technique. Reopen the airway and repeat the breaths. The grader will state you see the chest rise and fall with your breaths, but the casualty is still not breathing. Check for a pulse for five to 10 seconds. Place tips of index and middle fingers in groove of casualty's throat beside the Adam's apple on the side closest to you. Do not use the thumb. 10 seconds has elapsed. The grader states you do not feel a pulse. Perform CPR. Position your hands and body for chest compressions as in step seven. Give 30 compressions. Press straight down to depress the breastbone one and a half to two inches. Come straight up and completely release pressure on the breastbone to allow the chest to return to its normal position. The time allowed for re release should equal the time required for compression. Give 30 compressions in about 23 seconds at a rate of 100 per minute. Do not remove the heel of your hand from the casualty's chest or reposition your hand between compressions. However, all pressure must be released from the chest cavity to allow for full chest wall expansion. Next, you're going to give two breaths. Open the casualty's airway. Give two breaths, one second each. Repeat steps 10 alpha through Charlie for five cycles or two minutes. After one properly performed cycle, the grader will state two minutes has elapsed. If the candidate does not perform the steps properly within two minutes, they will be a no-go. Next, you're going to reassess the casualty. Check for the return of the pulse for three to five seconds. The grader will state you feel a pulse. Check breathing for three to five seconds. The grader will state casualty is not breathing. Give breaths at the rate of one every five to six seconds, 10 to 12 breaths per minute. Note, breaths should not be over exaggerated or forceful. After the candidate has demonstrated proper performance, grader will state two minutes has elapsed. If the candidate does not perform the steps properly within two minutes, they will be a no-go. Recheck for pulse and breathing. The grader will state the casualty is breathing and conscious. Next, place the casualty in the recovery position by rolling him or her as a single unit onto his or her side, placing the hand of his or her upper arm under his or her chin and flexing his or her upper leg until help arrives. Watch the casualty closely for life-threatening conditions, maintain an open airway and check for other injuries. The candidate will state that if the casualty's condition deteriorates, they will continue CPR until the breathing and pulse returns, they are relieved or stopped by a qualified person, or they are physically unable to continue. That is the end of Mike 3.